Okay, so uh, before we go on and talk about spectralod, it's important, I think, to talk about how the human eye perceives things. Um, it's, the human eye is not widely used in detector and astronomy anymore. Yeah, I mean, I don't walk around seeing spectra everywhere I'm looking at. Uh, but I think it's really important for people to understand how a spectra relates to what we can see, because these two are often very confusing. That's true, because, you know, one of the things is it's not that the spectra is seeing different things, it's just seeing it more sensitive or uh, at better resolution almost than what our yeah. eye can see. So here we've got our spectrum, and what I've shown is the wavelength range that's perceived by the human eye, roughly speaking, as blue, green, and red. Okay. <laughs> now, in fact, there are three different chemicals in the cones in the back of your retina. And this is an actual graph of the wavelength sensitivity that is called the short, medium, and long wavelength. And so the medium and long kind of overlap quite a bit, but they see different aspects. But then our brain processes the data to separate out the red and the green. So does that mean we're actually seeing less in this middle regime here between the blue and the kind of green? That's right. We think that these overlap it gives us enormous sensitivity to fine shades of colour in the sort of yellowy, greeny, and that's... One theory is that this has to evolved to allow us to tell whether the fruit is ripe or not. Oh, interesting, because we can see those subtle variations more, whereas we can't necessarily see as more subtle variations between the blue and green, for yes. instance. But by and large, it's, um, the, these are the wavelengths. If something is that wavelength, we see it as blue, that one green, that one red. So let's imagine we had a spectrum that looked like this. What okay. do you think that's going to look like? So this is all in the red. I'm not seeing any blue or green, so I would see it as red, right? Yep, so it's going to look red. How about that one? Well, so it's been the green, so I should see it as green. Yep. Now, tricky one, okay? You've aced the first two questions. Quiz number three, what do you think of this one? <laughs> it's always three. I can't choose C. Um, so it's a mixture of green and red. And now, I'm not seeing any blue, so there will be no blue there. But I'm seeing almost the same proportion as green and red. So we'd be a blend of red and green, which is yellow. Yep, you've done it. I remember my school colours great. <laughs> okay, bonus question. Oh dear. How about that? But I'm not seeing any of this colour, so this is what we call the infrared, but I can't see it from red. That's correct, so this is going to look black. So, I, so even though this object would be emitting energy here, I just wouldn't see it all. Yeah. But if I had a camera that could see the infrared, I would see it. Yes. And this is why we use cameras. Indeed. Oops. Um, how about this last question? I think it's trickier than the other one. Um, so, I so it's kind of emitting everything. There's a slight peak at green, but I'm also seeing all of blue and all of red. Now, so if I'm seeing all of the colors of light I can see together, am I just seeing white light? Pretty much. It look, might look white or maybe a slightly a yellowish slight tinge. tinge or something like that. I mean, I know interior designers would talk about different varieties of white and white. Length. That's right. So it's kind of the reverse of that prism you showed. So instead of the white light coming in, getting red, green, blue, the red, green, blues coming in, putting out white light. That's right. Um, so this is roughly how you can take a spectrum and work at what it would look like. But for example, if you had a peak here or a peak there, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It's all in the red. It would just look like red. So you are likewise, if there's peak outside down here or down there, you're not seeing anything. So, so human eye just tells you some sort of average of what's in this region, that one and that one, and the relative amounts of those things. It doesn't tell you whether it's this sort of red or that sort of red or this sort of green or that sort of green. And, and it's that sort of detail that we actually really need to understand what objects in space are made up of. Which is why we use spectrometers and not just eyeballs when looking at things in space.